starting chapter four. So this right here is a mm. new um kanji. This is iki. Um iki is basically breath. Or so and it's a noun. So you basically you add this with some kind of verb to mean like to breathe in, to breathe out, to take breaths, all those kind of um words. So iki. It's made out of heart right there, heart, and then jibun for mm -hmm. like oneself, which also has I in it. So I, oneself, heart is iki breath. Okay. Can you read the sentence for me? Jack wa okiku iki o suikonda. So suikomu is an inward kind of action. So what do you think iki o suikomu is? It's the breathe it's so the breathe, to breathe in air, I'm guessing. Yeah. Is it breathing inward or breathing out? Inward. Yep. So what kind of did he did he breathe inward lightly or how did he breathe inward? Mm, in an all key kind, kind of, of way. Really hard way. Yeah. So he takes a deep breath. So it goes <gasps> and it's gonna do whatever it's gonna happen next. Um, do you know what this is? First time we've seen it in our lesson, but it's a pretty common um word. Mm. Kiku. Good guess. It's actually iku, which means to go. Mm. To go. Iku. So we've seen this many times. Te to mean and. Um, a lot of the times we will use um te form rather than stem form to kind of insinuate a kind of so or like because kind of um relationship between the two actions. So if I said jump step bed no shita ni mogori komu, this would insinuate that I jumped so that I could crawl underneath the bed versus if I said jumpushi bed no shita ni mogori komu, this is more boring. It's just like I jumped and then I crawled underneath the bed. So this is more like the word and and this is more like so. Um when mm. we're basically having like two-ish sentences between the two um actions. So there's normally some kind of relationship between the two um verbs if we're using shte. Versus this one here is just and. There's it doesn't matter if there's a relationship or not. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you remember how this is read? That is there's a ku. So I have to guess kiku. That's a good guess because you love Kiku. Um, this this part right here, mm -hmm. this is i from Iku. Do you remember what Iku means? Mm. To go. Yes. And do you know what this part of this kanji is? Said earlier in this word. Oh, in mono. Yep, mono. On mono. Oh, it's yep. mono. Hi. Yep, it is mono. So, what does these two sentences say then? Read it in Japanese first. Yoshi boku mo boku mo kiku zo. Ah, uh, kiku? Ah, uh, kiku. <laughs> no, iku. Hi. Hi. Iku zo. Iku zo. Um, then it's just itte. Hi. Yep. Itte ano ikimono o shirabe de mi yo. Nice. Do you know what shiraberu means? Shiraberu. Ah, uh, like skipping. What would skipping be? Um, Shidabiru means to research. To research. To There's research. another word for that, which I can't remember. Um, mm -hmm. So you might be thinking about ken Kenkyu. So Shidabiru is very Hi. not experimental based. Um, Shidabiru can be like looking stuff up in the library can be Shidabiru. Or in this case, he's probably just going to like vaguely touch channel. But if you're doing like real experimentation, like trials and like test tubes you're not going to use shirabidu mm. that'd be weird shirabidu is normally a little bit more hands-off-ish it's it's more generically finding new information uh but uh it doesn't have to be just like reading in books for example here he's going to like go up toward the animal but he's not like animal jump through the hoop eat this he, like he's not doing that whole Kenku like level of stuff. Mm. Um 
So what is he gonna like be researching basically? Investigating. Ano ikimono. Yeah. So that ikimono, that thing. Yep. yep. So do you know what ikiru means? Ikiru. Um it has the kanji for noon, so I don't really know. Um, I don't think this is the kanji that you think it is. This right here shows up for living things and for when you give birth to something, like an umu. Those are the only times that kanji shows up. It's always a life-giving thing. So ikimono means a living thing. Mm. Ikiru means to live. Um, umu means to give birth to something like a baby or lay an egg. Um, nama is raw. That's also has that kanji in there. Like it, it has. It's very specific for what it's used for. Um. Mm. So yeah, ikimono. So um, should I do? You might think about it as investigating. That might. That's a better way than research. Because if you're investigating something, you might look in the library. You might walk over and do stuff. But you're not like making trials and science mm. like in that. So investigating might be a better way to should I do. Um, do you know why it's yo down here? Yo. Yo. Like an exclamation mark yo? Or... Uh, not really. That'd be just one yo. And if you want it long, you would normally do like a line. Um, when it's yo, specifically this is mi yo. So it's the verb miru. Adding um, yo to it. But specifically te miru. So te miru we saw earlier to mean to want something. To, to try something. Hi. Um, but miyo, on the other hand, is like let's. So let's try chirabiruing. Let's try investigating that ikimono. Um, okay, so now we're going to restart this. Yosh, boku mo ikuzo. What does that mean? Yosh, let's go, me. Or let's yes. Just, let's go. <laughs> it's basically saying, yes, I will go as well. So Annie has already started climbing down the ladder last week. I mean, not last. I don't know when we last met. Probably was last week, actually. So Annie's already started climbing down the ladder. But Jack is a little bit mm. intimidated. So now he's talking to himself saying, okay, yosh, I will go yosh. as well. I, I, I will go down. Um, this zo is also very masculine. Uh, girls don't really use zo. But it, zo is just like that yo you are telling me earlier about the explanation like mm, mark the yeah Hi. but zo is just a way to make that yo very masculine but yo is neutral boys and girls use it the same zo just makes it more masculine so it's kind of showing that he's really um pumping himself up right here because jack isn't that masculine of a boy but he's like okay mm. cool i can do it so he's kind of like Hi. he's like he's doing like a tarzan oh <laughs> he's um climbing mm. down uh, then we have itte ano ikimono shirabete mio. What does that mean? We got two actions. We got itte and shirabete. So what's going on here? Mm, itte and shirabete. Itte. Do, do, do. It's the itte from iku. So yeah. to come, but to it's go. to go. <laughs> itte, hi. To go ano ikimono. So... I go and then I shirabiru. 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 What was shirabiru? I was to investigate. Mm. To investigate. So let's go figure this out. Basically. He's... Put there don't. Or yes. Don't. Yep. So yeah, he basically says, I'm going to go down. And since I'm going down, so I'll, so after I go down, I'm going I might as well stab it. I might as well do some investigating about that living creature down there. So there's a little bit of a mm. connection between these two actions, right? He if he doesn't go down, he's not really gonna be able to investigate the animal. Um okay. So. One second, I have to do something real quick. Oh. Okay, so this right here is kiroku, and this means to record. Mm. Uh, you might have seen heard the word before, niki. 
That's a pretty common word, especially if you've ever seen the anime Mirai Nikki, um, which has mm. this part, the key, and then we have day. So day key is diary. Because you're recording information in your diary, right? About your day. So kiroku is just recording in general. But both of them have that little key in there. Sí. Um, so koto. So koto is very hard for a lot of Japanese learners when they start it. Um, I always describe it as an enveloping term. But then one of my students told me they like this person's explanation, which is basically that koto is like a photo album that has a whole bunch of photos in it about somebody versus no is more like one picture of something so if you like if so if you say taburu koto ga suki, that basically means i like eating everything so you have a whole photo album full of many pictures of a whole bunch of different stuff you like to eat versus mm. if you said taburu no ga suki, that more insinuates there's one specific thing you like to eat that you're referring to i like to eat that mm. is almost so koto works as like ah. an enveloping term that's also why when you confess your love to somebody, you use koto, right? Because you're not just confessing your love to like one aspect of a person. You're confessing your love to like all about them, like a big photo book about this person of information and mm. all the things they like. So koto Hi. is used for that more bigger kind of insinuation. So I thought, so I didn't hear since we're going to be seeing that soon. Um, what's this verb right here? We saw this just a little bit ago. Um, kiroku. And what does it mean? It means to record. Perfect. So here is our sentence. What does it say? Uh, so shite, wakatta koto. Oh, um, <laughs> it is kiroku. Kiroku yep. sorunda. Yep, kiroku surunda. So we got wakatta. What does wakatta mean? To know, understand. Yep. And we're using koto here. Is it because we have one piece of information we're understanding? Why Why are we using koto here, do you think? Koto. So everything, basically. Yep, everything he understands. So it's helping us know mm. it's not just it's a nikimono that he's done. It doesn't have anything else to kiroku. Instead, yeah. it's like he wants to have a lot of information. It's going to be kirokuing. So we're using koto to help insinuate that. So all together, how would you mm. translate this sentence? Uh, and understand everything. Uh, you know, it's clearly. smart to start with the verb of the sentence. So even though there's a verb right here, this is the object of the sentence. Mm. So, so, kiroku, so like to record. So what is he um, going to record? Suru. So suru means to. Suru. So kiroku. To. Um, I, I told you it meant to record, but it's a noun, right? There's no verbiness I... over here to conjugate, but it, it's used as a verb. So we have to add sudo so that we can conjugate it to mean to record. So mm. what does he record? He records everything that he understands. Exactly. Yep. Everything you understand. So that Seven. that's, yep. So. That connects the last sentence. So he's basically saying, I'm going to go down and I'm going to do some investigating about that living creature down there. And then I'm going to write down and record everything that I learn, everything I understand. Mm. Um, can you read this? I believe we've seen both parts of this before. So just curious if you can read it. Something no my. Yep, this is my. Um, so this is... means I. Any other guess what I might be read as? Me. Yep. Me no mae. Me no mae. So me, me no, no mae would mean exactly what you'd guess it would mean. What do you think me no mae means? Um, mae is before, after, time period. True. If mae, if mae has some kind of time thing going on, it means before. Um, But specifically mae means in front of. But uh, it's confusing because in English, our in front of timeline, we we do time this way. But in Japanese, their in front of timeline is the opposite. So going in front brings you into the before area, which is very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like a different way to think about how to make a timeline. Um, but yeah, it means in front. 
So what do you think in front of eyes means? Men um, Your field of vision. Basically. It basically is saying right in front of you. So in English, you just would say in front of you. And here they say in front of my mm. eyes. So you have to they specify with the man. Men no mae. Okay. Um, start with the first sentence. What does it say? Hey, ah, Jack, what? Soro, soro, to Nawabashi go. Oh, Arita, Arita. No, Orita. Orita. So right here, we got soro, soro, to. Why do you think there's a to here? And soro, soro, any guesses? Soro, soro, to. It's not the sentence end. It's not it's... the sentence end. You're correct. It has to do with what soro soro, soro is. Soro. It's a little confusing just because of where it's located in the sentence. So I'm just interested if you can recognize what it is since it's in a different location than usual. Eh, soro soro to. Normally, you'd see something like mm. this right, um, like right here, I think. Like soro soro to oriteta. So soro soro means um gradually. And it's a sound effect. Mm. So that's sound like effect soro, soro. Yep, soro soro is a sound effect. So you can kind of tell the sound effect because you know we got some repeating noises right here, soro soro. Mm. So repeating noises tend to insinuate sound effects. So when you have repeating noises plus a to, this is just describing the way in which we're doing the verb. So this right here, we've moved the toll a little bit farther away than it usually is. So yeah. Um, so he gradually orirus. You know what oriru means? To descend. Yeah. What is he descending on? Nawabashi go oriru. The rope ladder. Exactly. And who's descending? Jack. Perfect. So Jack. Yep. So Jack gradually descends down the rope ladder. And the next sentence? Frimukto uh, So if you're going so this this is context. If you're going down the ladder, which direction does your eyes normally look at? Um do my eyes look at one point down? Yeah. Where, where do I you guess look? Down you before? can look down, that's correct. But in general, you're kind of looking toward the tree that the ladder is on, right? Mm. Where's the putradon right. in this situation? Is he over here? Where, where would the putradon be? Uh, go opposite. So the putradon would be this pink guy right here. So the putradon is behind mm. Jack who is climbing down the ladder. So when you climb down a ladder, since you normally look, you know, the direction you're climbing, so he's not facing this way. Sorry, how do you, sorry. So he's not facing this way as he climbs down a ladder normally, right? That's looks a little mm. weird. Normally you face the direction you're climbing down. However, he's so, going to furimuku. You know what that means? Furimuku. Uh, yeah. That means to no. turn your head to look behind you. <laughs> so, oh, wow. you, so yeah, this is just a complicated say to say he's now he he's basically he pauses with his climbing to turn his head a little bit while he's climbing down. And what is what 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 does he see? Menomaini. So in front of his eyes, he sees putteradon. Perfect. Yep. So he's climbing down the ladder. Looks behind him and he sees a putteradon. Quite. Um, so de. I'm not sure if I've taught this before, but de is used, one of the many ways that is used is to tell you it's the way in which you do a verb. I think I saw this earlier with like to hold de, like walking on foot or something. Oh, he told de is what we saw mm. walking alone. Hi. Um, but yeah, that's used with lots of things as well, like knife de koroshita means to kill with a knife. So I want mm. you to say staring at Jack with eyes. So I have Jack, eyes, and staring at. So man, mitsumeru. So how do you think you would say that? Mitsumeru. Mitsumeru. Mm -mm -mm. 
เซจักคือโนเมเดมิมิซเมรุ So this says looking with Jack's eyes. I think that wasn't the goal of my sentence. So <laughs> the staring at Jack with eyes isn't really mentioned whose eyes we're using right here, but I will say um, pute the don. I'll say yokuryu. 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 Hi. Yokuryu no me. <laughs> Staring with the Yokuryu's eyes. So, what particle do you think Jack would get? Because Jack's not the subject of the sentence, he's the object、はい、of the sentence. Jack o. Yep, perfect. So, right over here, the fun thing with this de is that we can put it wherever we want. We could put it there, or we could put it here. It doesn't really matter. Could be. Looking、mm. at Jackson's eyes this way, or you could say, you know, this way. It doesn't change the meaning in any way whatsoever, other than just for aesthetics, like the way they wanted to say it. That, that's why we have parts. That's, that's why Japanese has particles. So you can move things around. To some extent, if you're、mm. adding location de and weapon de, location de should go before the, the tool de. That, that's the only like rule I would say. So if I want to say、um, tree house to de and then me de, like I wanted both a location and de, location should go first and then it should be the weapon at some point. So、um, otherwise it gets confusing. Okay, so let's go read this sentence then. Suru doku doku. Suru-doku. Don't worry, it's doku. I'll explain it in a second. Suru-doku. Ah, kira kira shita. Um, <laughs> me, me de. Jack, 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 o mite, mite, mitai, mitai. Close. This is actually a big t o Hmm. Mitsumete iru. Yeah, so let's start with the easiest part of the sentence. Me de jako mitsumete iru. What does this mean? So, um, me de. So that is eyes. Eyes de, which is, hmm. Which might be easier to、distant. start with the verb. Hi. Um, okay. Uh, So, seeing? Yeah,、um, I, I specifically, it's staring at. Staring, hi. So, what are we staring at?、Uh, Jack. And Jack. how are we staring at him? We are staring by m e Yeah, with, with eyes. So, the reason why we're specifying with eyes is that we decided to describe. The eyes, and we described it as surudoku kira kira shita. So, first off, surudoku is surudoi, which means sharp. And it's been, and it's in te form because shita is a what? Shita is under.、Uh, it can be an under, you are correct.、Um, it, that would normally have the kanji with it. It would look like this and then have shita on top.、Um, in this context,、mm. kira kira shita, I'll do the whole thing together. This is actually suru, the verb to do in past tense form. So, to do kira kira. So, what kind of thing is to do? To do、uh, suru. Why? Yes,、uh, suru, suru, exactly. So, because that's a verb, Suru doi, which is an adjective, needs to turn into ku because now it's an adverb. So, ku just lets it describe things that are not nouns. So, we got sharp kira kira in eyes.、Um, so, kira kira is like sparkly. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
kind of kira kira. So, but specifically, it's sparkling though in a sharp like way. So it's like twinkling, but he. But we're saying that Jack is a little bit um scared in this ca- in context. Yeah, koa. But yeah, that's why I met here to describe the how he's basically staring. He's staring with sharp, sparkling eyes at Jack. Mm. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna. Okay, I think we're gonna do one more and then we'll end. So this right here I... is cat. And this right here means fur, basically. Um, it also kind of means hair, but you don't normally use this with human hair, right? Because human mm-hmm. hair is kami, right? Kami. So ke is more like fur. Um, and it can show up in things like if you're talking about wool, for example, would be, um, I don't know how it's pronounced, but it has like, it would have that in its um, <laughs> meaning. It's like keito, I think. Well, I think it is Kato. 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 Right there. This is wool. <laughs> it's thread for thread for wool. But yeah, that's that K for fur. Uh, in this context, it's just normal fur. Okay. So we've seen Temitai actually in this today, even, which basically means you want to try something. Um, the thing oh. that's letting us know it's want is this te right here. So te mi tai. If you have mi tai, and then whatever is in front of it is not te, well, that's a totally different thing. When we have mi tai, and then something that's not a te, but it can still be a verb, see right here, it's not te right here, then this means it looks like. So it's very similar to yo, but yo is more like describing the way in which something does something. This is more just looks like in general. <laughs> you don't need to worry about it. It makes sense when you make sentences with it. Um, can you read mm-hmm. this sentence for me? Yumi mitai. Yep. So this means like a dream. So we want to use yume no yo. You would want to normally add something else to it. So yumi no yo hi, for example, a day that is like a dream. It, it, it'd be mm. a little bit weird to not have some kind of other thing as a comparison with yo. But in general, they are interchangeable. And it's kind of just like, what do you prefer to do? But yeah, if if you don't want to specify, uh, mitai is what tends to be used. Um, or can you read this for me? Uh, kare wa soku shi, soku. Sukoshi. Suku. So this is like so it looks so we're here saying it looks like he is a little tired. So this right here is an example sentence where we can't use yo because yo is more like similes. So you can't so what right here is more like you're making an assumption. Right? We're we're assuming that he's tired. He looks like he's mm, tired. Squishy. So that's also how um because a little in that case, a little tired. So that's also how mitai. So mitai can be used just like yo, or it can be used if you're making an assumption about something. Mm. So mitai, yeah. all you do is have basic whatever you're attaching to it. So tsukarete do ends with the do. It means look like. So how do you looks think? Looks like tired. Yeah, looks like tiredness. Um, so how mm. do we say it's like touching Henry? So I have Hendi and Sawaru. So Sawaru is a U verb. So Sawarimas. How do you think it gets conjugated sawarimasu. in te form? Any guesses how uh, it might be in te form? Hmm. Sawarimas. So sawatte. Yep. So what's that? Awesome. So how would you say it's like touching? With I and G, Henry. Mm. Mm. It's like touching Henry. Uh, but, 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 but. So that would be so what? Hmm. So what the suru mitai? Um, where would Henry go? Uh, Henry san. No, that's not right. So before you do uh, that. Why do you have suda here? Suda means to go. It's not ing. Do you know what ing is in Japanese? 
We have a verb here that is tiring. Tire yeah. It's the uh, iru would be ing. So, suwatte iru mitai. Ah, hai. So, that is like touching. So, iru. now you can think about how am I going to add Henry to this? Well, how would you add Henry to this uh, if mitai Henry wasn't wa? here? Because you want, how would you say touching Henry? If mitai wasn't here. Touching Henry. How touching would you Henry. So, my so Henry is what does you want? Um, you wouldn't really do that. Hen, Henry. So, swatte do Henry can mean that. It can mean touching Henry, but it could also mean Henry who's touching. Um, so mm. you could say, like you said, swatte do Henry, Henry, uh, mitai. But, um, in general, you wouldn't see this that much because it like this is grammatically correct, but it is a little bit vague. Because as I said, it could mean touch, <laughs> like touching Henry, or it could mean like Henry touching, which um, I think you it's would make the right. yeah your assumption at first would be it's Henry who's doing the sawaru. You would need to have a very specific context for it to be obvious that it's not mm -hmm. that. So instead, we get Hendy is going to be over here, and we're going to take a particle. What particle mm. do you think we're going to give it? Like touching Henry. Hendy what? So this would mean for sure that Henry is the one who's doing the touching. Oh, Henry, no. it's like Henry touching. Uh, I don't think that's what we want. What's the object? Touching is the ah, object. Henry. Oh. Yep. Henry. So what they do die? So it's like touching Henry. Okay, and here is our last sentence. Um, I, um that kanji. So this means was fur. What was fur? Key hmm. or close. Ke. Ke. Ke yep. Yep, ke. Hmm. Kega. Kega. Totemo yawara. Yawara. So who's talking right here, do you think? Hmm. Who is talking? Who is talking? It's not it, Henry. It, it, the person talking is Annie. Annie is talking. Oh. Slightly feminine no right there. Um, so no, what, she, I... what? So Annie earlier, she went downstairs and she was like, hello, put it on. So this is actually her um, talking about the put it on. So, ga totemo yawarakai. so what do we know about the fur of the put it on? It's totemo yawarakai. It's very yawarakai. It's fluffy. Exactly. Close. Um, yawarakai specifically means soft or light. Mm depending on the context, but fluffy is perfect. If you said trans fluffy, it's not really wrong. Um, in this context, it is, I do know it's not actually fluffy because I read further on in it. So it's just soft, mm -hmm. uh, mm. but there's nothing wrong with the idea of fluffy behind Yawaraka because fluffy things are normally soft. Um, so and then she goes into more detail. That is Tonari no Henryo sawatte ni mitai. So Henry, is the name of the dog that lives next door. In case, mm. in case you forgot. Yeah. So, Tonari no Henry. So, adjacent to Henry is Sawateiru Mitai yo. So, you're right that Tonari means um, like adjacent next to. Um, however, when you have like Tonari no and something like that, a lot of times we're kind of using ourselves, us as a human being, as kind of like a judge board of the tonariness. Like as weird as like for example, if we say tonari no seki, uh tonari no seki, seki means seat. Do you think it'd be the seat next to me? But it actually normally means like if I'm in class and there's a seat that I normally sit in, like an assigned setting seating, my tonari no seki is whoever sits next to me. So tonari no henry is actually um the house next to mine house henry 
So the Henry who's mm-hmm. next to me or the Henry who lives next door. So Tonari sometimes is used to kind of shorten that um meaning of not just next. Yeah, it's like a way mm-hmm. to say neighbor. Um so ne neighbor is like short can be shortened as tonari. Um but it's not that it means neighbor, but it's kind of like it's it's come to be to kind of have that connotation. Um so for example, there's a anime called Tonari no Kaibutsukun, which you would which they translate it as my little monster, which isn't what it means at all. It means mm. the monster <laughs> next to me. But they're meaning that this girl's seatmate, whoever she's sitting next to in class, is a monster. I... It's like what the joke is. So, but so, so it, it kind of means it's a oh, my neighbor monster. Or oh, Tonari no Totoro. That's my neighbor Totoro, right? Mm. That's that's a better example. That's Tonari. My neighbor. No, Totoro. So even though Tonari doesn't actually mean neighbor, it has come to mean that in most contexts. So my neighbor, Henry, or my neighbor's Henry. So yeah, you can think of Tonari as neighbor. So, um, And then we have O right here and Sawaru. So what's going on? Is Henry doing the Sawaruing? Who's doing the Sawaruing here? Must be the potato done. Well, that's not. It's ten. <laughs> um. So the mitai part is saying like. So it's saying like touching next door neighbor's um Henry. So in the context, the one who's the, using this likeness is Annie. Um. So the subject of the sentence is potato don. But the ah, uh, but the topic is Annie. So. Putridon's mm. fur, Putridon's fur is like Annie, who is like is like the fur of Henry. But specifically she's saying the act of touching the Putridon's fur is just like touching Henry's fur. So <laughs> this <laughs> so Yeah, it's a, lo- a little complicated when we got these shorter sentences. But yeah, it's just saying mm. it's like touching Henry next door. So if we say that in English, we know the one doing the touching is not whatever I'm talking about. I'm the one touching because I'm using mitai, like. And like is like a personal like. opinion, right? It's my opinion. Mm. So I can't know what someone else feels about what, what Henry feels like when they touch him. I only know what I know when I touch Henry. Mm. So whenever, whatever is being attached to mitai is my opinion. You know, same with like you me mitai. I'm not talking about someone else's dream. It's it's like a dream to me, you know. Mm, or he looks I, tired I... to me, even if he's the one being tired. It, it just it looks like that to me. So, to me, he looks tired. So he looks. So you're right that the subject of the other sentence is put it on, but it's put it on looks, and then we have mm. this part, which would be like what. Annie feels when she pets the um, dog Henry. But yeah, that is where we are stopping for the day. Any other questions or comments before yep. we go? Nope, that's fine. Okay, then um, 